Well, hello, this is me again. It is the 20th of July, and uh, I would like today to address some important issue, and I will start addressing this issue with this simple RAND, uh, we're going to use RAND definition, and explain to you, uh, basically read it for you actually. Military mobilization involves the assembling and organizing of national military resources that is active or reserve forces to support a nation's defense or strategic objectives. After that, RAND obviously tries to offer itself as an uh, indispensable specialist in mobilization, but while RAND, uh, uh, RAND's definition of mobilization is somewhat correct, it obviously doesn't cover the full spectrum, so to speak, of mobilization, because national resources are a little bit more than just military resources. And I will start from afar today, and I will uh, kind of let you introduce, uh, I will introduce you to a, a very interesting thing, I think, which is, um, of course, the United Nations, it's called International Standard Industrial Classification of All Economic Activities, ISIC. It's revision 3.1. I believe it is still uh, um, valid today. It's 2002. And it is being used by many people uh, and many economists to kind of present the statistical data on this, on that, in terms of the economists and uh, all kinds of the economic activities of the countries. But here's the issue. And that's uh, what I write my books about, and I'm not the only one. And again, you can obviously go and, you know, read and wonderful Michael Hudson's books and, you know, uh, economists who deal with the real economy, not with this monetary baloney. And the fact is, once you see the dollar sign in ascribing any or describing any kind of uh, economic activity or military activity, you can close the source and never, you know, uh, go back to it because it's going to be complete bullshit and baloney, which was will be having nothing to uh, nothing in common with the real uh, economy, or for that matter, what uh, what is known as composite index of national capability, which describes actually economic capability of the nation to conduct the war, the main indicator of economic, cultural, scientific, and military development of the nation, it has nothing to do with anything at all. And let me uh, explain to you what do I mean. And it has everything to do with mobilization. And I already stated, despite the fact that Rand is not wrong in uh, uh, providing the um, definition of mobilization, it's obviously uh, incomplete. And I already added to you that actually mobilization, national mobilization for the war, uh, it requires the... Um, stress and effort across the whole board, which covers the cultural and even spiritual aspects. But about this later. So what do we have then? As you already, uh, uh, um, let me give you definitions which this uh, ISIC document uh, gives you in terms of uh, what um, the uh, activity is in terms of manufacturing. The reason I uh, go about manufacturing is this. Look at this. This is some data manufacturing output by the country, which you can see yourself here. And it's called macro trends. And as it already highlighted in uh, yellow above this table, you see it's called manufacturing refers to industries belonging to ISIC division 15 dash 37 value added is the net output of a sector after adding up all outputs outputs and subtracting in, in intermediate inputs. Look at this. For 2021, the pure manufacturing thing, which is, yeah, I will show you what this uh, is, 15-37 uh, uh, divisions, uh, which is actually D15-37, uh, is this. China produces 4 trillion, whatever, 865 billion, blah, blah, blah. Germany produces 772 billion, United Kingdom produces 279, and Russia, poor Russia, produces uh, 256. 
We can go further and look up the, uh, uh, what is the uh, United States producing, and uh, you will see yourself that U.S. output is, uh, I don't mark it in, uh, highlight it in yellow, you can see yourself, it's two trillion something. So, is this uh, uh, picture, so to speak, uh, correct or realistic? No, it is complete BS, as is the modern Western economy, economism, so to speak, and so-called eco economic science, which, for example, gives us such clown as Paul Krugman, who won the yet another useless Nobel Prize in economy, who continue to provide a absolute uh, baloney and absolute crap to people around, publishing their the reasonable articles in, in New York Times or Washington Post and you, you basically what you have here is the spread of the uh, ignorance and complete economic or for that matter real economy uh, incompetence. So let's then go back to our ISIC and see wh what is uh, actually Division 1537. Here's the, uh, how the ISIC Revision 3.1 uh, 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 gives us the definition of Division 15-37. Uh, it's manufacturing. Of course, if you look at this document, you will see yourself that uh, it gives a very kind of uh, profound, so to speak, uh, definition of what uh, all this uh, 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 manufacturing is. But let me show you something which are subdivision of uh, this 15-37, which is in this particular case, division 29. It's the part of this... Uh, <coughs> manufacturing process. And look what is interesting stated there under the 2927. Read attentively. Manufacture of weapons and ammunition. Aha! So, unlike Eisenhower, uh, great Ike, great president, great uh, commander-in-chief in, in, in war in Europe uh, was speaking about uh, during his tenure as the president and as actually a general. He was talking about that, yeah, when you produce something, uh, you know, you uh, in terms of weapons and in terms especially nuclear weapons and all those uh, uh, military toys, you subtract it from nation, uh, nation's uh, wealth, which is, of course, building schools, highways, you know, hospitals, and things like and he was absolutely correct but truth is when you calculate manufacturing uh, military industrial complex and weapons be, uh, and uh, weapon systems and everything connected to it, uh, uh, to it become extremely important and guess what they add to the manufacturing output and as you can see yourself, it, go, uh, it shows you uh, what is this all about manufacturing and weapons are you know organic part of it and that is why we come here to uh, this kind of key point of my discussion today about mobilization by the way and uh, about what is this all about and why this UN uh, statistical document uh, is absolutely baloney as is the financial and economic system uh, of the combined West today which you can see yourself collapsing literally as I speak to you now because obviously when you live in the alternative universe or in parallel universe economically you will never get it you know, you will always be thinking that, yeah, because a uh, dollar sign is there, it's, you know, uh, basically Great Britain produces more than Russia in terms of manufacturing, which is a reasonable. Uh, and Russia is actually dwarfs uh, in terms of manufacturing uh, the uh, uh, British economy. But, hey, it, it is what it is. You know, they stated those criteria. They gave those definitions. So let's count. But let me explain how it all happens in real life. And you, you already saw yourself that even in ISIC, the numbers given there, they are not numbers of quantities. They are all those dollar signs, the denomination in dollars, which is, as I already stated, you see dollar sign on any economic activity, forget it, throw it away because it's going to be complete BS. It will lead you to basically bankruptcy, which happens now with uh, Western economies. But look at this. Let me show you something. Uh, here it is. What you see here is a Virginia class uh, fast attack submarine. 
by which is uh, produced for the US Navy and let me put it this way it is outstanding boat I mean it's excellent boat really state-of-the-art I mean great sonar complex great you know propulsion and you know great signal processing and things of this nature so it's a great boat let's m make no mistake I'm absolutely positive that it is and I'm saying this without any kind of hesitation because you obviously in terms of some of the naval technologies United States is outstanding it's you would expect it you know but look at this let's take a look at uh, how much this uh, Virginia cost okay so um, let's take a look we open the uh, Congressional Research Service and uh, for 2020 and uh, as you can see yourself uh, what people in Congress you know get in terms of estimates of the Virginia class boat procured in the recent years cost roughly 2.8 billion each and by the way I remind you again those things those boats bombers missiles all of it it's all they all come into this uh, uh, weapons and weapon systems which are counted towards the manufacturing so as you can see yourself these are uh, previous boats now there are boats um, uh, which are coming flight 3 of Virginia which are coming now they cost roughly 3.2 billion which allows them to carry I don't remember you have to uh, correct me I believe 28 or 24 tomahawks and here is the issue um as you can see yourself the boat is 3.2 billion well let's be very uh how to put it uh, uh, uh inaccurate or and round it up to 3 billion on average so uh everything is perfect about virginia's excellent subs except one thing the strike weapons they carry are absolutely obsolete the reason they are obsolete because they carry the same good old plums Tomahawks, which of course for the serious air defense are not that big. I mean, they're big as any kind of the strike weapon, but I mean, obviously, they are not in the same uh, category as the latest uh, uh, strike missile weapons. And of course, classic uh, American, you know, set of the updated MK 48 and, you know, torpedoes and things like that. So, in terms of the quality of the platform, uh, Virginia's outstanding, great boats. In terms of weapons, well, yeah, let me put it this way. It's still the weapons which actually from the 70s frankly speaking so but here's the comparison and I'm I'm meeting here the issue of Great Britain altogether but here it is look at this this is Yasin class project 885 uh, submarine which is uh, manufactured by Russia it is also state-of-the-art extremely silent extremely advanced uh, signal processing and uh, as you can see yourself, uh, it's concurrent with Virginia class submarines and uh, four of them are already afloat in Russia, five are under construction and I believe there will be a decision made to make them more, more of those but I, there is also, uh, it, it's all dependent on the situation with the uh, development of the even newer class of the fast attack submarines uh, but here it is, unlike uh, Virginia class obviously uh, those uh, submarines uh, by Russian Navy they carry an astounding uh, variety of the missiles they carry 32 of them uh, dedicated missiles in special uh, 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 containers and special uh, launch tubes and those are as you can already might have guessed already uh, those uh, calibers especially new variations of the calibers three uh, 3M 14Ms which the range of four and a half thousand kilometers you have onyxes high supersonic missiles you have now zircons hypersonic missiles they also carry a lot of uh, very advanced torpedo and even uh, anti-submarine missile systems so uh, they're really great subs they are definite competitors in terms of platforms but uh, uh, in term in terms of a platform but in terms of weapon systems uh, they really make Virginia look like a backwater and what is important about the um, Yasin class submarine is that uh, I will give you just simple number you can always check uh, check it out so it's about one billion dollars per sub so as you can see yourself um 
United States by producing one sub has Russia producing for the same basically value added all this uh, pricing state of the art equal as a platform and much superior in terms of weapons submarine like Yasin class three of them but if this is not bad enough but and guess what that's what goes into the statistics if this is not bad enough well guess what we can go further and review other things um for example this is a uh, the columbia class submarine columbia class submarine in the united states which doesn't exist still it is in the process of the construction since 2020 and it's not afloat and not going to be afloat for a long time we're probably looking at something like closer to 2030. well guess what uh, while this news give a little bit incorrect data on the submarines because 9.5 billion contract is given per one submarine we can go back we can go back to uh, uh, our um, uh, what was the name of it uh, uh, congressional research service and look attentively at what actually actual well what is the actual cost of uh, those submarines which united states navy still doesn't have for a 12 ship class the cost will be as you can see yourself 109 billion dollars if you divide 109 billion dollars uh, by 12 what you get roughly is 9 billion dollars 9 billion dollars per single sub Okay, let me show you something. This, what you see, is a Beret class submarine of Russian Navy. It is already afloat. Actually, five of them are afloat. More are being constructed. And guess what? Uh, we go into the Beret class costs and look at this. The first, uh, uh, basically, <laughs> Uh, cost of the submarine was total cost of 713 million dollars including a research and development expenditure of 280 million dollars wow so basically a very simple calculation a very simple calculation in comparison gives you immediately the astounding proportion that for the price of a single single submarine of columbia class which united states doesn't have russia procured the class of the eighth state of the art and actually floating and already been on the combat patrols uh strategic missile submarines one to eight no less probably one to nine so guess what those numbers in dollars also go into this baloney isaac uh, manufacturing output and when you begin to really kind of uh, think about it, uh, kind of you know profoundly, it's like my God, it's it's a complete disaster. It's absolute misinformation on the matters of uh, you know producing of anything, which is absolutely correct. And don't forget that uh, uh, everything is given, as you already saw yourself, in dollar signs. So how do we even go and compare all those outputs when they are measured in the dollars that's what makes actually the great britain higher in ranking in terms of manufacturing output uh with russia when uh, russia even just by the matters uh, the metric of the military and weapons alone make i mean dwarfs production or whatever manufacturing is uh, done in the united kingdom or in germany and that's what is this all about it's absolute misinformation it's absolute corrupt and uh, again as i said united states produces this lame flying duck f-35 which cannot even fly supersonic and it costs 100 million dollars which for the same price russia produces around three or four state-of-the-art su-35s and probably three su-57s which make this f-35 look a goddamn you know from the uh 19th century in capabilities and that's what is this all about and guess what 
Now going back to the mobilization. This was the main consideration of those uh, many American and British, especially CIA, MI6, Pentagon guys who look at the world through this baloney, uh, economic baloney, and they think, ah, okay, we need Russian economy to suffer because look at this look at our numbers you know look at our huge you know dollar signs and Russian economy is so you know minuscule just produces nothing so let's start this you know operation against Russians in Ukraine let's you know uh, basically try to lure them and make them you know uh, attack uh, and invade ukraine and guess what so we're gonna you know just kill and kick their ass because you know ukrainians are the best fighting force we ever had so basically russian army will run out of everything like in two weeks or three weeks and yes you remember you all remember those things when uh, everybody were talking about uh, and i'm not gonna repeat it i spoke about this so many times that oh yeah russians are running out of ammo russians are uh, running out of smart weapons they run out of send off weapons they run out of personnel so russia sustained one billion losses and things of this nature and then nothing happens and russian army continues to advance and russian forces and ukraine is now basically done as the organized military force and uh now, as you uh, remember uh, this, and I will show you, that starting from the May, that was the thing which was uh, uh, they wanted uh, in terms of their uh, Russia committing. They wanted mobilization. Why they wanted the mobilization? And it was everywhere. And starting from May, June, and even today, you can see yourself. This is Newsmax, uh, which is absolute tabloid, not real serious, uh, as any U.S. mainstream media uh, uh, organization. Uh, they begin to give you basically absolute complete baloney, which is lie, that Russia has begun mobilization of reserves. And look at this. As any other uh, source, CNN, uh, Fox, what have you, you look at this uh, highlighted in yellow, uh, 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 source they provide guess what you go to the source and of course it is ukrainian media so and yeah that is uh, just one example out of many but it is true uh, uh, across the board for every uh, uh, british you know uh, american or any other media outlet and they want this mobilization why do they want this mobilization from russia well in reality well, russia doesn't mobilize anything russia didn't even mobilize economy and basically you go to Russian cities or villages, uh, life goes on, normal way, you know, people go to the stores. You can look at Russian stores filled with food. I mean, they have everything. Yeah, so yeah, IKEA left Russia. Oh my God, goodness gracious. So there are other people and uh, companies which immediately go move in and substitute them. So the point is very simple. When it became clear that Everything they planned in Pentagon, uh, Pentagon, CIA, what have you, London, uh, that Russia will run out of, you know, and you, they saw those, and look at those numbers, they should run out of everything, and Russia will need to mobilize itself, because pretty much the only uh, competence uh, modern Pentagon has, the same as CIA, the same is, is just to do their... Uh, informational operations and PR and kill innocent people doing the false flag. That's pretty much the extent of their uh, competences today. They cannot fight a real war. They cannot fight anything and they cannot produce a lot. So, and uh, as a result, everything what was happening prior to this uh, rumor of, which is essentially a lie, it's an absolute lie, Russia doing mobilization was specifically for PR purposes because First, obviously, uh, Ukrainian uh, army as uh, organized force was demolished completely. When, uh, Russia now deals with pr primarily those uh, remnants of the um, nationalist uh, b battalions and Nazi battalions, and of course the territorial defense forces, which are, as I already stated, VSU, Armed Forces of Ukraine, are going through their folk sturm phase when they grab everybody from the street and literally throw them after a week preparation into the, to the front line where they get eliminated and killed by Russian weapons, Russian uh, forces, and right now Russia, for example, the, as you can uh, listen to Colonel Douglas McGregor, 
who is definitely well informed about it, Russia actually uses primarily the LDNR forces, militias, and some, uh, you know, some separate, uh, you know, random formations of the, let's say, paratroopers, but main Russian forces haven't been actually into this foray uh, yet. I mean, most of Russian forces are held back. And even that, it, you know, Russian artillery, Russian smart weapons, which allegedly Russia ran out of two months ago, they continue to pummel Ukraine. And uh, so, as Mr. Lavrov today stated, well, the United States uh, delivers uh, HIMARS with the ATACAMS, which is the 300 kilometer range uh, ballistic uh, guided missile. Well, guess what? Russia will move further not just through the Zaporozhye, Kherson, or Kharkov. So obviously Russia will push the front and will probably leave the Ukraine, I don't know, some small place around Kiev, that's about it. So that's how security works. But the point is that when they understood that actually uh, Vsu is done and the, every plan which was planned in Washington DC or uh, in London went uh, astray and doesn't it doesn't happen as they planned well because they are incompetent so the only thing to which they can spin inside uh, their own countries in spin here inside the United States for us you know plebs you know steerage for people who allegedly do not understand or for people in Great Britain or in Europe is to somehow present uh, Ukraine as that it still kind of, you know, re resists and, you know, counterattacks somewhere, you know, and kills Russians and about to uh, basically get to Moscow in just about a couple, any minute now. So how, do, how can you spin it? You can first, you cannot spin it already by showing territory because Russia gains territory. And you cannot hide this anymore. And you can see yourself, uh, uh, Lugansk is completely liberated. Russia is uh, already, uh, uh, Seversk has fallen today. So, and yeah, Russia advances, you know, steadily and calmly and, you know. So, you can spin it by showing how desperate Russia is, you know. And according to all those morons who run the Bloomberg and, you know, what have you, uh, New York Times, the Russian economy is in tatters, well, which is not even close. But you need to spew, you need to propagate this uh, rumor about mobilization, which should show that Russia ran out of everything and now the situation is so bad that they need mobilization of Russian economy, partial or whatever, to show that how great Ukrainian uh, Ukraine is, and of course the main uh, issue here is not even Ukraine. Nobody in Washington gives a crap about how many Ukrainians are killed, how many, uh, it's just all baloney, because they are amoral people and all those uh, American journalists, they are not really humans in normal sense. They don't have morals, they don't have integrity. So if they have a million more or a million less of Ukrainian troops die, they don't care. I mean, so as long as their asses are feel comfortable and as long as they get their paycheck, they are fine with this, which tells you they are basically low lives. By, But the point is that you need to present this uh, mobilization. How you present mobilization? Yeah, that's how you do it. You go to uh, Ukrainian sources, which every day uh, declare that they killed 20,000 Russians and are about to reach Moscow outskirts and Putin is in panic, panic, and Russia is totally on the military, uh, so to speak, rails and totally mobilizing because the impact of Russia is so huge. Well, the reality is Russia is nowhere near the mobilization because there's no need to. The forces Russia has, and this is just a small fraction of Russian actual combat forces, they just kick Ukrainian ass, I mean, dramatically. And don't forget, it's not just Ukrainian ass, that's the whole uh, other thing. There are more and more American, British, Swedish, what have you, officers and personnel which is being killed. Right now, those Heimers are not meant by Ukrainians, they're meant by U.S. personnel. All those, you know, British and American POWs, they are not some kind of volunteers. Many of them, they are actually cadre officers or sergeants or wh whoever, who are there under the legend, under the cover. They gather all this intel they can, they gather all those war correlates to figure out how Russia fights. And the worst nightmare already happened to Washington, D.C. Russia already basically decides what to do with Ukraine because she, again, 
As Putin stated correctly, and Lavrov confirmed today, we didn't even start anything, as they say, which is correct. And that's the issue. They looked at those numbers, and they thought that they, want, they can spin those numbers from this ISIC, just based on those numbers, which are completely a complete economic caricature, when you look at what Russia produces, actually, and especially in the most expensive, most hugely value-added, uh, an item such as weapon uh, weapon systems. It, it's just the way it is. I'm sorry, guys. Tesla is not technology which uh, can you Im you can impress somebody who produces the state of the art weapons. Russia produces so much of it, so many that all these statistics, all this intelligence, White House and Biden administration, all those people, and especially London, which is the pipsqueak of a, a country economically and militarily, they received. It was complete, uh, basically, misinformation. And they miscalculated. And now they're desperate to try to get to this, uh, you know, uh, what is uh, called the um, uh, idea, which is, of course, completely false, and it's absolutely made-up shit from the Ukrainian media, that Russia is mobilizing. Russia is not mobilizing. The forces, this fraction of the forces Russia is using in Ukraine is more than enough to kick, uh, to basically destroy the armed forces of Ukraine and actually m basically destroy whatever NATO will be throwing there in terms of weapons and personnel. But if the weapon, uh, if NATO wants to go uh, actually big, which uh, it can't. It's, uh, it's a separate question why it can't. Sure, there are 90% of Russian forces standing ready, and that will be, oh my gosh, that will be wowser. And Russia may this time not stop at Berlin, if it comes down to it. So, and uh, that's what I wanted to tell you. But to give you uh, basically the uh, proper perspective of my talk today, I have to show you in conclusion what is this all about. And let me show you. I showed it before to you. And that's when you understand what mobilization is. And I remember I mentioned many times the what is called composite index of national capability. Look at this. This is the steel for 2021. As you can see yourself, still crude steel production. And steel is the foundation of everything, especially war. Everything we do in life is impossible without steel. Guess what? <clears throat> Russia produces, even by estimates, you see E, uh, at Russia, it's estimates, usually downgrading uh, Russian statistics, but Russia produces, as you can see yourself, 90% output of the United States in steel. Uh, do you know how much steel uh, United Kingdom produces? I believe it's 7 million tons. Russia produces about 11 times more steel than uh, United Kingdom, and uh, about 2.5 times more steel than uh, Germany. Well, there you go. We can go and furthermore. Uh, as you can see yourself, war is energy. Well, guess what it is? Look at this energy thing. Oh my God, Russia produces about 70% of the energy output of the United States. Uh, do you see there any Germany, any UK or anything? No, you cannot see it. So, but even, comp uh, let's go further. Let's go take a look at uh, aluminum. Oh yeah, there we go. Look at this. This is aluminum. Russia produces about seven times the size of the, uh, the number of aluminum the United States produces. And if not for Canada, which is, uh, compensates for it, United States will be even the player in the, for example, aerospace industry, both commercial and military, because aluminum is the foundation of war. And once you look at those numbers, and then compare to this baloney from Isaac, and especially when you understand how over Price dramatically and uh, with the absolutely adequate value added for the unit of the military weapon system and platforms, you begin to understand why Russia is not mobilizing. Russia doesn't need to because her economy is gigantic and what she produces, especially in terms of the military material, she didn't even scratch the surface of what is needed to basically destroy whatever is left of Ukraine and basically defeat NATO. Well, actually, NATO was already defeated, and the only option the United States has today, before uh, admitting that it was completely, you know, 
defeated it economically, geopolitically, strategically, what have you, militarily especially, the United States will not be able to fight the real uh, conventional war without sustaining a dramatic defeat in Europe. So uh, here it is. So that is why they need to speak about this mobilization, but Russia doesn't need to do to mobilize itself because she has plenty to go around to do it basically what is called with the one single you know left hand with the right hand behind its back and uh, that's uh, what is this all about about this mobilization and as I already stated Mr. Alov today uh, actually uh, you know basically supported this point of view when he said ah you need the 300 uh, kilometer uh, Heimers you know you, you supply them to Ukraine Okay, we'll go further. We'll move the range of those missiles, or, you know, <coughs> from where they can shoot at Russia. Well, further, if need be, they will be moved further into the Poland. So, and nothing could be done about it unless, of course, United States wants to go into the nuclear war with Russia. Considering the nuclear arsenal of Russia and things which United States cannot even intercept and they are already procured and the United States is nowhere near those modern weapon systems not to speak about the for example ABM anti-ballistic missile systems including Russian interceptors which United States simply doesn't have any equivalent I'm talking about A235 new doll and already being procured now as 500 and as 550 coming so even in this uh, nuclear exchange uh united states doesn't st stand a chance because it will be wiped uh, uh, off the map and that will be a huge tragedy and ca catastrophe for humanity but russia will survive in some form because of the huge territory and because russia has the much better chance of intercepting a lot of intercontinental ballistic missiles which we don't know if united states even have many of them anymore and uh, so that was my talk to you about today and as always guys those who uh, want to support me please support me on the patreon and those who like what i do please subscribe to my channel and uh, i will be talking to you later and we will expand on this topic of mobilization well talk to you later bye bye